Hi, it's Midnight Mule, and today I thought I'd talk about holidays and some of the challenges Aspies can have and family members of Aspies when it comes to holidays. Now I'll be talking about my own experiences. Some Aspies will have similar experiences to these, some may have very different. There'll be challenges that affect other Aspies that I'm fine with and vice versa. So there are a whole variety of issues around holidays or even going away on a business trip but this is about holidays that are difficult for Aspies. The whole idea about adapting to change in anything with an Aspie generally is quite difficult. Transport is something that's difficult for a lot of Aspies including me. I really struggle with public transport. My worst is probably aircraft. I find flying really difficult. I think uh, two reasons for that. One is I kind of feel like if there's germs or diseases on the plane, they're just getting circulated and you're stuck in this place for ages. The other one is if I want to get off the aircraft, I can't, or at least legally I can't easily get off and I'm trapped. Whereas if I'm on a bus or a train, I can get off at the next stop. I find buses very difficult. It's The thing with buses, especially if I'm on my own, is I'm constantly thinking, what if this is the wrong bus? So supposing I have to get the 88, I then look at the sign by the bus stop, check the 88 goes where I want to go, look at the bus number coming, it's the 74, and then I check the chart again, where does 74, what do I want 88, check it's still a 74, and on every bus coming, I'm checking the number, checking on the sign, I've gone off to public transport now. And then when I see the 88 coming, I'll read on the bus where it says it's going, and I'll check on the sign again where the 88 goes. And so I then get on the bus, and then I'll be checking all the stops, and am I getting off now? And I know logically it's silly, but that's just what it's like, So buses are really difficult. And of course, on buses you have the issue of air quality, and other people are on there, and that's really difficult. So when we lived in Edinburgh, it wasn't unusual for my wife and I, maybe the kids might get a bus into town and be a couple of miles away, say, and then we'd be shopping or whatever, but then I'd walk back. I I just couldn't fa face getting another bus. So they'd all get the bus and I'd walk. Anyway, that's aircraft buses, ferries and ships. On the odd occasion I've been on those, I'm fine, more or less. I take seasickness tablets, so my stomach's nice and calm. And I think the reason I'm okay on a a ferry is I can walk around and if something happened the ferry started sinking I think I'd have a fighting chance of being all right they have lifeboats etc whereas on an aircraft something goes wrong chances are you're in trouble and so I don't fancy that and I have been on an aircraft where bad things have happened before so maybe that's added to the anxiety with that what other transport is there taxis I'm okay with they more often than not I don't want to talk to the taxi driver but occasionally I will driving if I'm the one driving I'm generally okay and so if we can go on a holiday where I'm driving it's in the UK that's fine so we were planning on going to Europe this year we're currently in January and last year we talked about oh yeah let's go to Paris it's something my wife would really like to do and the kids quite like it they think so we got all our passports ready and we looked at the various modes of transport available and the three main ones from where we live is train all the way uh, including the channel tunnel train with ferry across the english channel or else flying but for each of us in the family there's at least one of those which was very unappealing so in the end we thought the most likely is we would actually get the train all the way and go on the channel tr channel tunnel so we're looking at all different things about holidaying in Paris and I was doing it because I thought it'd be very nice for my wife and some of the kids but of course for myself I'd never choose to do that. But then in the recent past, the last couple of months, in conversation with a couple of my sisters, younger sisters who live in and around Edinburgh, we threw around the idea of all three of our families going on holiday together somewhere in the UK and they were up for it and we've all got kids that overlap ish on ages 12 kids between the three families and they were all up for it and so from a selfish personal point of view i would much rather holiday in the uk than go abroad there are far fewer trigger points for me 
And as it turns out, we've agreed we've managed to get something. We are now going on holiday in the UK. So I'll get to that again later. I was talking about Aspies and holidays. Something that's difficult for Aspies with going away somewhere is it's a new environment. Now the environment might be fine, but until we're there, we don't know. So for me, I would naturally think of all these different things that may be wrong before I get there. When I get there, there might be things I hadn't thought of that are wrong. The chances are everything will actually be fine. Any Anything that's not quite right, I'd get used to very quickly. So that's more of a worry about something that doesn't happen. But there is still the slight anxiety of things are going to be different and it's it's going to be difficult. There's There's obviously new routines. If you're away, the chances are it might be you're eating at different times or in different places, maybe eating different food. We don't watch much television now, but if we did, of course, there might be different programs on the telly. The transport would be different. The shop, we've got a Sainsbury's local to us, but we might be somewhere. There's only some other corner shop and it doesn't have some of the things we like eating. All, all little things. And for neurotypicals, these are irrelevant. But sometimes for an Aspie, some of these little changes can just raise our stress levels a little bit. And although in itself, these are all minor things, there are so many little minor things that can cause problems. We're just that much closer on edge, or at least for me, that's true. There could be new activities. If you're going away as a family or the group, it might be some of them want to, I don't know, go hiking or go to the pool every day or do these different things that you're not used to doing and you don't want to do or you don't know if you want to do them and so that could raise the stress level. Of course if you're a neurotypical and you, you're going on holiday with an Aspie you would one of the points of a holiday is to try new activities and do new things and see new things which for a lot of Aspies isn't a positive thing and so before we knew that I was Aspie of course I'd have seemed like a quite a drain when we're going on holiday now I might still seem like a drain but at least we'd understand why so I wouldn't be that keen on going out for days out I would still do it but it was probably quite clear that I was like oh should we go back now should we go back now we've seen it now and I'd be a bit like that there are definitely sensory processing issues so for me in the past we have stayed in a few uh, cottages that are on farms and this sort of thing but obviously there can be some smells around there that are very different to what we're used to generally though we've been very good at choosing places that are in the countryside away from people so I'm I'm kind of all right but on the occasion we might have had to stay in a city or something because we're visiting to go and see someone maybe it's a funeral or a wedding or something then it's a lot more difficult we'd be in a hotel and there's lots of people there and the town itself or city we're staying in, there's lots of new things there that are just annoying. I just want to get back to the hotel bedroom and be on my own. There's, ah, uh, see, food. At home, an Aspie can generally get used to the food they have. They can make sure they have the food they like. When you're away, especially if you're in a hotel, they may not have the particular food you like or the food you like. So you may have a, a fair list of maybe seven or eight different meals to choose from, maybe more, but there may not be anything there you like. And it may be from the name of the item, you don't actually know what's in it. And again, especially once you get older in my sort of age, it may not be such a big deal. When I was younger, it was a major deal. What's the food going to be when we're getting there? Because there were so many foods I didn't like. Now you can something that would help if you're going away with somebody who's got Asperger's this is a plus not a plus here but something to think about if they have a particular passion about something or an interest you could build that into a holiday so for example you might have a kid who's Aspie and they're really into medieval and knights and stuff so if you're going in the UK you could probably find a castle or a fort nearby and you could go and visit that one day uh, a lot of interest you could find a museum that are of the interest they like whether it's cars and vehicles or whatever it is i'll talk about some of the coping things some things that are going to help with holidays now planning is a good thing especially for me i like to know what's going on not from a control freak point of view but just so i i can get straight in my head what's happening so there'd been talk as i said with our family going away with the families of a couple of sisters 
but it had only been talked for a couple of weeks and nothing much was happening. So a week or two ago, I started a Facebook group, invited the six parents and said, right, let's just get this sorted. So then people were putting in their different cottages and lodges and bungalows, etc. We found that it'd be suitable, maybe two or three together, maybe a big one. And so there was chatter about that for a few days. And then there was one that we're all more or less happy with. And then there's a case of where someone needs to organise it. And again, things seem to be moving slow. So I, I then just contacted them. I phoned them, phoned them the next day, got everything sorted, agreed, right, here it is. I've booked it now. So now I knew we're only in January. This is happening in August. So another seven months away. This is where we're going. I've got seven months in my head to get used to the idea. This is where we're going. I can go to Google Maps. I can see where it is. I can see the locations around it. I know how long it's going to get to various places. So there's lots of potential things, unknowns, that could be triggers and now not a problem because I can start sorting them all out. So if an Aspie is of an age where they're able to be involved in the planning and have some input, then that would be a good thing because, again, like I said, not control freak, but just knowing what's going on. And there might be things that they might think of that the neurotypicals may not think of that's important to the Aspie, but not the neurotypical. Uh, so Aspie, certainly me, like to be structured, so I'd quite like to know what we may be doing each day. Now, it may be fine to have two or three days where we say on these days, we're going to go out and do something, but we don't know what yet. But at least I know on those days we're probably going out. Hopefully we'll have at least one day where we'll agree we're just going to just stay in the lodge that we're going to and just do nothing else. And that would be good for me. And we're going to have three vehicles. It may be on some days some of the party go out and some of the party don't go out. Now you would have thought, you would have been right in thinking, six adults, 12 kids, all in one lodge, isn't that a major problem for an Aspie? And ordinarily it would be, there's going to be all this noise, all this chatter, but my two sisters, obviously known me all their lives, they're very used to me and they know what I mean. So if I say something or do something, they don't take it the wrong way. And so it's actually going to be very relaxing being around them. Although they're not, they're not Aspie, I can actually be myself around them. So that's nice. And although there's 12 kids, aged from I think 2 to 18 there'd be at the time roughly, they'll be able to amuse each other. And there's enough rooms in the lodge that for most of the time, there's not going to be kids, I think, climbing all over me and around me and being noisy. They'll be in a different room playing with their older or younger cousins. So that's going to be okay. I'm perfectly happy to play with kids sometimes. If I know on these occasions my activity is I'm doing a thing with the kids, I'm fine and that's what I'm doing. And I found generally, as far as I'm concerned, kids, believe it or not, tend to like me all right. I get on well with kids. And I think the reason is I speak plainly. So children understand what I mean and what I'm thinking and kids tend to speak plainly. They don't do all this hidden language stuff. So our commu my communication with younger kids is really, really good. One of my sisters in particular, I hope it's all right me saying this, one of her daughters is quite intense. And I was at her house maybe a year or two ago and the daughter was being quite intense, coming up to me asking the same question. And after a while I just said to her, look, I don't really like it when you keep asking me this, that and the other. Would you mind doing X, Y, Z? And she was like, okay. And then she did it. And there were no hard feelings and I still got on very well with her. And all I had to do was explain to her, look, I don't really like it when you do this. And she stopped. And I, I think for a lot of kids, you, all, you just need, all I need to do is explain nicely, I don't like this, or oh, do you want to do that? And we get on fine. There'd be enough kids to be playing rounders or other things. So I think, I think we're going to be all right. I hope we are. Um, yes, having plans. Something I've done, this is going off onto a different holiday, holiday now. Years ago, before I knew I was Aspie, when we went away, we'd often go with my mother-in-law and I get on very well with her. She's incredibly easygoing. She couldn't actually be better. She <laughs> couldn't have a better mother-in-law. So when we had our first child, I remember in particular, maybe he was... I don't know, one or two. And it's very natural when you have a young child, you never actually get a break from them. And even though you might love them to bits, it can be a bit intense. So what we did, I think we had 20 minute shift. 
So for 20 minutes, one of us would be with the baby and the other two are doing something else because where we were staying, there are activities on site. And so it meant you'd have 20 minutes on and 40 minutes off. And that was completely manageable for me. And that worked all right. Um, going back to the holiday this year, small things help. Just again, the whole planning thing. So although it's months away, I, uh, I made a comment on the Facebook group about dinner and eating and we should probably think about who's doing the cooking. I'm absolutely fine being involved in my share of the cooking and just throwing it out there so the rest of the group are aware, oh yeah, I suppose I'll be cooking once or twice and maybe choosing what days you might be cooking. I already know at least one of the meals I'll be cooking with one of my sisters. And although it's months away, it's one less thing for me to really think about. I think that's probably what I've got to say about the holiday. Maybe after the holiday, I might speak something about it, say of things that did go well and things that maybe didn't go so well. But I think this holiday, I should be able to cope with it all right. I should be able to get enough space. My sisters, I'm looking forward to hanging out with them because they both enjoy talking about similar things to me. They're very happy listening to things about theology and the Bible. I can be silly with them. And I get on fine with their husbands as well. So I'm hopeful everything's going to be okay. Hopefully some of that was helpful. I've probably missed off lots of issues that affect Aspies. If you've got any hints or any issues that I've missed off, please leave some notes in the comments. I'll see if I can reply. Your comments may be useful to other people that watch the video as well. Thank you. Goodbye.